I'm going with Banshees of Inisherin mm -hmm. as my number three. Um, the first time I watched this movie, I liked parts of it, but I also was, I don't know, made me uncomfortable. Perhaps I wasn't so into the whole chopping your fingers down mm -hmm. thing. And then I just happened to watch it again. And there's something so brilliant and amazing about the tone that Martin McDonough is able to strike off between what is happening in this in in the, on this island and there's mm -hmm. just such rich themes of friendship and legacy and what is the life remaining in front of you matter and mean um but it's all done in a very simple non flashy to me unpretentious way mm -hmm. even though this movie has some really varied themes that could go in a very different direction but it doesn't and on top of it it's like a, it's not a play movie, you know. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of those movies of people just sitting in a room, and I like those too. But right. this is a movie, movie where it's scope, everything from score to costume design to production, cinematography, all those aspects that we always love talking about on this podcast that make a movie and transport you—they're all at play. Mm -hmm. And some of the best performances of the year for me, like all those four performances, mm -hmm. I would give awards to all of them, especially Colin Farrell, Barry Keegan, and Carrie Condon. Yeah. But curious, what did you think about this one? Yeah, this is my first uh, McDonough film I've ever seen. I've never seen any oh, of wow. other films. Yeah, this is this is the first one, and and I only went to it because it was getting a lot of. Hmm. awards discussion and i'm a huge colin farrell fan um mm -hmm. so i uh i don't i don't i think i understand him potentially as a filmmaker now after after watching this i can say the movie i thought was very well made incredibly acted all the things you said about the craft of it is just like top notch um and uh incredibly funny too i found it very oh, yeah. funny very the funny humor and... of this was yeah. was just spot on um it just i think and again i'll, I'll know more when i see more of his films like his the worldview in the film though it seemed like the heart of it just was kind of um kind of a little I don't want to say like pessimistic but it was sort of like a negative worldview oh, like yeah, well yeah, yeah. and that yeah and that I think I just couldn't get like I wanted it to be at least like a more of a gooey center to this and I felt no. I didn't like sort of yeah like his worldview is like no this is like you know you got to treat it isn't about being kind all the time and no it should i think it should be and like there was nothing wrong with colin right. farrell's character yeah he was boring and the people didn't like him but that's not an excuse just to be nasty to somebody and then you can no. see how that nastiness that brendan gleason uh does towards farrell then turns farrell into like a nasty person too it like ruins his again i don't want to use the word innocent because it's not necessarily innocence about him but it's more just this sweet sort of uh you know simple kind of guy and some people are just sweet simple people that don't need they're happy on that island even though nothing's going on right you know, Carrie Condon's character, she was unhappy being on this island of things which are kind of too boring for her, and she wanted to escape, and I was happy that she did. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean everyone has to. Some people enjoy the more of the simple life thing. And I, I I just was trying to kind of wrestle with, was this movie trying to say, like, Brennan Gleeson was necessarily right, or was the film commenting on that at all? Um, so that was the piece that I was like, oh, I was kept waiting for it to have some kind of uh, turn where I'd start feeling like the movie was at least viewing Brennan Gleeson's actions as negative instead of either it's, I think it wasn't taking a position on it and I wanted it to have some sort of position mm. at the end, but uh, I don't know. So you're thinking you've seen his other films as this sort of, you know, is this kind of his worldview then of a little oh, more yeah, dark definitely. and negative? Okay. I mean, three billboards is, I have lots of issues with that movie, but in mm -hmm. Bruges is amazing. And it's sort of similar in tone. I think this is even calmer than mm. in Bruges, but I see what you're saying, but that's sort of kind I of what I point. love about this movie <laughs> right, yeah. as well, that it's ambiguous. Yeah. And you'll see this is a running theme in all of my movies, actually, that they're all ambiguous movies, um, mm -hmm. which I don't know, feels very timely and topical of the times that we are living in. And maybe that's topical always because mm -hmm. nothing is should be or is black or white, but now more so than ever, it sort of feels like it's so easy to pick apart and just, you know, run this way or the other way versus this movie and all the other movies that I'll talk about. They kind of leave things on the table. It's up to you. I view it in a way that actually the movie is is not on Gleason's side at all because look what he did. Nobody is happy at the end of this movie. People have died. Mm, right, right. Animals right. have died. Yeah. People oh, have man. fleed. Oh. Yeah, the whole yeah. little small island, which seemed like a very 
you know, quaint, beautiful place is no longer a beautiful place. And mm -hmm. that is the harm. So to me, the movie has a very strong stance on Gleason, mm -hmm. but there's no warm gooey center. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what, and yeah, maybe we could talk more about all the films because I, I think you raise a really good point in terms of not only the connection between yours, but then the, the opposite connection but, uh, yeah. of mine. You have the opposite. The, yeah. Literally the exact opposite. Which is um, part of why I have issues with is all of them in some way. Well, except for one. Except yeah. for one. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's interesting. The other thing that I, I thought was like the background of the Irish Civil War mm. going on at the same time, which I will admit, like I didn't, I knew that there was one but I didn't really know any details about it. And after watching this film, actually, I was like, was this movie trying to be an allegory or, you know, what was this trying to say about that? Cause why did it set during that time? And I went back and did like a ton of research and kind of understanding what was involved in that. And then I was trying to wonder if the film was sort of saying that, yeah, that was, you know, obviously civil wars are always bad, but there are, you know, sometimes depending on what side you're on, I guess, justifiable. Like sometimes that is the only course of action to, to advance, uh, the society in the way that should be advanced like american civil war was necessary unfortunately to eradicate slavery and make the country better mm -hmm. um even though i wish we never had to do it but we did and i think that was a good thing and i would have fought on the, on you know been supportive of, of of fighting in that war and i just was wondering if this movie was trying to say like they shouldn't have fought it i, I was starting to get a little too wrapped up in the political piece of it after i did this mm -hmm. research and thinking like do i disagree with his political stance on this um uh, but you know the one thing i can say about the movie is there's a lot going on and that was something that I that I did respect about it and liked it. So I did like the film. I just was, you know, it wasn't as enjoyable as a watch as maybe I thought going in, um, especially in the first half. I was like, this is really funny. Like, oh, yeah. they're, you know, it's the Irish countryside. And then at the end, I was like, whoa, this is like, this really went some dark places. Dark turn, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would recommend a second viewing because I think I enjoyed the movie the second time way okay. more. Yeah, yeah. My take on the Irish Civil War is sort of like, these people are just trapped here on the island. Because, you know, the question comes up is that why wouldn't any of them leave? But the thing mm -hmm. is that where, where do you go? Right. What right. would that be like? Because mm -hmm. they're literally shells being fired to where you could go. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing. The second thing also is that it's the same people who are on the same side now fighting with each other. Mm -hmm. So that's what the other commentary that things can turn. These mm -hmm. were also people who are on the same side and no, they're no longer so sort of this looming dark cloud outside mm. justified or not right that people still fighting right mm -hmm. so that can happen so i think it's sort of a it's a foreboding literally that you can hear and the banshee woman walking around mm -hmm. being the spirit and yeah. sort of calling out that this is coming as mm -hmm. you know so i think that's what they're trying to go for uh, interesting okay yeah i mean it is a film where i'm like i i would want to watch this again yeah um and i think i now that i know what he his what his style is and what his voice is, perhaps I can kind of get over a little bit my uh, you know hesitation to the, the depressing <laughs> nature of the film if I if I give it a second go around. So yeah, yeah. Hey there, it's Alex. If you like the review and discussion Kron and I just had, make sure you subscribe to our channel, Movies That Shaped Us, to get full episodes. Every other Wednesday, Karan and I cover a topic around important people, places, events, and moments in our lives, and then explore it through three of our favorite movies. Subscribe right now or follow our podcast on Spotify or Apple Podcasts via the link in the description below. Hope you join us for the journey.